Don't forget to check us out on Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn, iTunes, and iHeartRadio. We are also on Facebook and Twitter, YouTube, and Ustream. Widely available. This is Grok Talk. I'm Steve McDonald here with Skip Murphy, Susan Olson, and Jane Cormier. And you have something to say. And what is that site by which, if you don't want to donate on Granite Grok? Oh, oh yes, you can go to patreon.com slash grokTalk and make a one-time or a monthly donation to support the program. Keep the servers paid for, keep the phone lines open, keep the internet connected. Uh, make sure Haggy has a makeup artist. Make sure call. Haggy has, has hair and, and makeup. And you have to remember that we we pay CNHT for the phone and the internet. So when you give us money to give them money, you're helping to support them because then they don't lose money by not getting paid. You get it. And we did get a couple of, one rather large donation, relatively Yay. speaking, for us. Very cool. And it will go to the purpose for which Steve was talking about last week. Yeah, we, we're going to do some, uh, we're going to do some marketing. Yeah. We're going to do a, a Spreaker campaign and we'll probably do some Facebook ads and we're going to promote the program. Yeah. I may have to take a little expand to expand the audience to replace the Eye of Sauron. I wasn't here. expecting it so soon, so I got caught um, a little bit <laughs> off guard there. But that's when a good you, when, you, good when you send me that email and I'm like, oh, we have a budget. <laughs> I wasn't ready. I have yeah. to be ready. I have to make ads and stuff. So we'll, well, we'll that, be doing that, that soon. That's enough. fine. But just know this is this is looking like it's going to have to be replaced. Oh, well, we'll see. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about in this segment. I, I bet <laughs> the first time it gets a good look at at Haggy, it'll burst into flames. <laughs> <laughs> what do you bet? It's, Anybody want to put hundred bucks be, on it that? Could be. It could be. <laughs> Listeners, send a hundred dollars. See if it bursts into Hundred bucks. That'll pay for a new camera. Mm, pay for if you makeup. if you send us a hundred bucks, we will. <coughs> Set it on fire for you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, so anyway, oh, my friend. Uh. So you were you were talking about the um, the two lawsuits, right? Yeah. Um, and and our interesting executive counsel. Yes. Okay. Um, I like many many people wrote the executive counselors. And after, I mean, of course, we all know that abortion is legal. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. We all know that. The, the what do they call them, abortabots mm-hmm. um, are all over that. But notwithstanding the fact that it's legal. The robots. Abortabots. Robots. Ro- oh. v Wade robots. You can call uh, them That's right. That's right. You did call <laughs> them robots. I call Sorry, them robots. Very good. Um, abortabots makes more sense, though, because people are like, robots? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> But the issue, aside from all of the grisly um, information that came out, is the problem that I have as a taxpayer. Yep. My money mm-hmm. going to an organization that murders yep. children. Absolutely. Okay? If, if, if that's what they want to do, and if, and if mothers want to go in and actively aid and abet their physicians in murdering their own children... Mm-hmm. Right. Don't ask me to pay for it. Absolutely. I think that that's probably the the best traction that we have in this debate right now because taxpayers should not be on the hook for doing that. Agreed. And and so that's really what this issue is. So I so I wrote our executive counselors, and I and I basically said that I said you know I understand that you know um, that abortion is legal mm-hmm. in the United States. However, um, I do not want. My tax dollars, my New Hampshire tax dollars, in whatever form they might be, mm-hmm. whether it's meals and rooms or whatever it is, it goes into general revenue, into the general fund that then gets laundered mm-hmm. and given to right. um, uh, planned uh, murderhood. And that's what people don't know. That it money is. comes from the general fund. Of right. course it does. Of right? course it it's does. your money. It's yes. your it's your it's your fees for your cars. It's your right. gas. Sure. Everything that goes in there. Sure. Cigarette taxes. Cigarette money tax. off of lottery tickets. Yeah. Okay. Anything that you buy in the state of New Hampshire that's taxed mm-hmm. um, goes and goes into the general fund is then laundered and given back to these people. Okay. So I said, please don't do that. I said, you know, if if, if trafficking in in dead baby parts isn't enough. I, I don't know what is, and I said I, along with many other New Hampshire uh, voters, will be watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean Maggie Hassan is already fundraising off. Yes. Of course, she I is. get her emails, and oh, she, yeah. she basically said this is just another deceptive attack on Planned Parenthood by those who want to limit 
a woman's right to make her own health choices. Well, I'm sorry. I just want to limit how my tax dollars are being spent on this horrific problem. And why are we, the taxpayers, financing that woman's own health decisions? It's none of our damn business, and we shouldn't be in the job of paying for it. And if you're going to force us to be involved in this because of our money, then by dang, we're going to speak up about it. Because Mm -hmm. people like Maggie the Red Hassan have put us into the middle of... The doctors and the women, of uh, certainly with by Obamacare. But remember this: her hands Isn't are not. Is Obamacare cl- supposed to pay for all of this anyway? Yeah, yeah that's the that's the point. Yeah. But you know, Maggie got herself into this situation of being called the red because she wanted to nationalize at the state level all of the hospitals here in New Hampshire mm-hmm. in the first place. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's she wants government in charge of everything. She's a socialist. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Okay, but, did you want to say something? But I, I got back. <laughs> let me finish where I was headed. I got back only one response. From? From the, the email that I sent. Who okay. was it? Um, Do you want me to ask him? Yeah. What's his name? Uh, the uh, <laughs> executive <laughs> counselor here from my district. Um, Van Ostrin? Van, 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 Van Ostrin. Van Ostrin. You know, yeah. You know, that guy, it kills me. Because he, he's fundraising too right now. Yeah. Well, he basically wrote me back and told me to go yeah. do something anatomically impossible to myself. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Wouldn't result in a baby, though. Uh, uh, probably no, not. Probably, probably not. not. Um and so I sent him back. I, I have fun with making graphics. Yes. Um, and I sent him back a graphic that I had done in his honor. Yes. He didn't like it because I sent it all the other guys. Did he, did, he see, what, did he say anything to you? Did you get a response? I'm glad he didn't like it, by the way. It was a great graphic. Thank you. You'll, have to, re- hurts, you'll you know? have to bump it back up to the top of the front page. It, it had a little tiny baby heads <laughs> in a box. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, he wrote back, and it was kind of – most of us are all you – you may not be, but you remember the Smothers Brothers, right? I yes. do. I do. I used to watch And, and whenever, whenever, you know, they would, they would get into a, to an argument with one another, um, Tommy would always respond with, oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Well, that's kind of what I got back. Mm-hmm. All right? So nothing. Nothing. Um, we already know where, where Dave Wheeler stands. Yes. Absolutely. You know. Right. Immutable. Yep. You never have to worry never. about right. his vote on any issue. That's the kind of Republican I want. Right. I never have to worry about their vote. No, you're right. But you know, we shouldn't have to worry about anybody's vote. Okay, if you take a public stand, whether we like it or not, we ought to be able to count on that public stand. Right, uh-huh. but unfortunately, Sununu has always been pro-choice. Of course he has. So. And and the whole bit about, well, I, I need to read the contracts. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, I know. We Listen, New Hampshire Right to Life started our campaign on Chris Nunu five months ago. We started with a postcard campaign. And face-to-face, he laughed He laughed and said to me, and I give him credit, he did turn around and vote, voted at least an acceptable vote in many ways. It was political posture. Uh, Come well, on. We still was, have, he and Maggie are going to be at it. Okay, but look at Susan. We still have two Planned Parenthoods that have a lack of funding from the taxpayer going to those organizations. So whether or not he did it for political posturing, I don't care. He voted at least a way that was somewhat acceptable. But my first uh, face-to-face with him, he told me, uh, yeah, I'm getting those 12 postcards you know, a day. And I said, really? I said, well, doesn't that impact you? He goes, no, no, no. My constituents need these services. So we went into a 20-minute debate on the services. And he kind of laughed. He kind of you know, thought that this, that this was going to be a hoo-ha thing. And uh, so then he said, well, if you find me any alternatives, I won't vote for, for Planned Parenthood. So uh, we did go back, and we found, um, you know, I don't remember. It was a very long letter we sent to him, and our attorney helped draft it. And we did find some reasonable exceptions that, you know, or oper- not exceptions, but reasonable um, alternatives, alternatives, right, that could be offered. And we didn't get any response back. So then we started our next mailer. The next mailer was a nice, big, long color one that was beautiful. I loved it. I did that mailer. I was proud of that mailer. <laughs> and um, he, I got this irate phone call about a week into it with uh, a very distraught Chris Sununu, um, who for like the first three, four minutes, I didn't get a word in. His premise was, I can't believe that you didn't send me the mailer, was the, you know, the first thing. You know, I can't believe that you sent something out like this and you didn't send me a copy. Well, frankly, I had been contacting him via email, you name it, and face-to-face. And I don't think that I owed him a copy. Frankly, I didn't think of it. Um, 
But he did hear from the constituents and You know, if you're going to sucker punch somebody, you don't tell them. Of course. <laughs> Duh. Well, Randy Cushing hey, did hey, the same hey, thing. Hey, don't look, but I'm going to hit you. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's even a hit. He knew it was coming. I was very upfront. We are not going away well, on this. Here's the other thing. You know what his stand is. Of course. He knows what your stand he is. Definitely knows. What's he think you're going to do? Just go, oh, go ahead, yeah. do whatever you want. Well, uh, let's, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> let's face, we have some teeth now. New Hampshire Right to Life has some teeth, and they have some respect. We, we killed SB40 by ourselves in the Senate. New Hampshire Right to Life, and it was a deadly bill. It was a shameful bill for fetal homicide. So we have some teeth, and you know what? We're going to keep chomping. All you have to tell Scott uh, Chris Scott Brown. Brown. Yes. <laughs> Scott, uh, yeah. All you have to do is tell Chris, Chris Brown. Sununu, Scott. Scott Brown. And I did. <clears throat> when you when you are a Republican and you're trying to out abortion Gene Jaheen, right. this is what you get. Right. And I have been relentless on New Hampshire GOP committee man Steve Dupree, mm-hmm. who is actively giving money to Planned Parent Action Fund, right. who is the PAC for Planned Parenthood that is actively looking to oust Kelly Ayotte. Right. Now, far be it from me to defend Kelly Ayotte, right? Because there's a lot of other stuff that I ain't happy about. Right. But the fact when you've got all these high elected GOP officials and candidates and politicians acting contrary to what they have said is our platform, right. then I'm sorry. You should not worry about the grassroots rising up and right. taking both musket ball shots at you, uh, semi-automatic, bolt action, Figurative. cannons. Figuratively. Yes, figuratively. Figuratively. I, I don't have to answer that. <laughs> Cruise missiles. <laughs> Are you filling in for Mike? <laughs> filling in for Mike, aren't you? But, you know, it's if you're, point. If you're going point. to act this way, I mean, right now, the upper echelon for the, uh, for, for the most visible part of the echelon of the NHGOP is the reason why Trump is where he's at. Yes. Absolutely. Because people are tired of voting for you because you don't do what you say you believe in. Right. We hear the fraud of or the faux promises, and then we watch you weasel out, just like this Planned Parenthood defunding thing in D.C., Mm -hmm. a standalone bill. Well, if you really meant it, you would have attached it to the defense appropriation bill. As much as I hate it and I wish people would just do single-level bills, I mean, this was a faux vote. Mm Mm-hmm. It really was, and it shows the complete irreverency that they have for the base. It's the, it's the whole hypocrisy of it is that we're supposed to just sit down and shut up while they're sitting there and pissing all over their own platform. Ain't I mean, happening is, anymore, dearie. Well, and, and you oh, know is that going to get me in trouble dearie? with Megan? No, no. dearie. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just no longer skirting around the issues anymore. Oh, <laughs> That's so derogatory. Skirting. You can't skirt those issues You know issues what? Oh, longer. leave Megan alone. She she did do it. She did. She Are you might listening, have. Jennifer Horn? Yeah, well, I I, I I I am ambivalent about that whole thing, but I can tell you, I think Trump's Twitter thing about the bleeding comment was <coughs> was Sorry. so disgusting. Oh. Right there, he's gone. Oh yeah, you didn't read that one this I morning. I did. Why? Why no. have you been out of shape? I've been out of shape because you know what? We should expect a little bit of integrity. Just you know, can we just have a little bit of like something above the the. The mess and the fighting and the bloody and the disgusting. We have like a minute. And and I'm going to read this and then we're going to go to break because we have to make another phone call. But Mark Stein was talking to uh, Sean Hannity and this is something he wrote this morning. He says, only in the U.S. have the parties been set in aspect for a century and a half. Unlike either Commonwealth or European countries, America has a rigid institutionally entrenched two party system. If you're an American first and a Republican voter second and that you seriously believe in the central proposition of Trump's candidacy that an endless flood of mass unskilled immigration is putting the very nation at stake, why would you put party over country? Why commit to supporting, say, Jeb Bush, who thinks illegal immigration is an act of love? Many electors agree with Trump that America is dying before their eyes. If that's the case, why should fealty to a party that bears a large measure of responsibility for that decay take precedence over love of country? The reality is that the GOP establishment, after their appalling behavior in the Hassert years, were given a second chance by the base in 2010 and a third chance in 2014. Now they're demanding a fourth chance, and people go, well, say what you like, but a Republican president will at least get to a point rock ribbed Supreme Court justices like uh, John Roberts, who constitutionalized Obamacare, and uh, Anthony Kennedy, who gave his federally mandated gay, gay marriage. Boehner, Mitchell, Kennedy, Roberts... Not much to show for a party that's been supposedly dominant for 
35 years, is it? The GOP thinks the issue is Trump. Much of the base thinks the issue is the GOP. Here, here. Which it is. And All if right? there wasn't good alternatives, I might agree with that. Yeah, there are. Uh, we're going to take uh, – we're not going to take a very long break. <clears throat> we're going to take no break. We're going to go right into the <laughs> next segment. I'm going to press the Grok Talk button, and we're going to start the next segment, and we're going to call our next guest. And you are more than welcome to stay with us if you'd like. And uh, here we go. Stay tuned. Yeah. 